Hello again and welcome back. Another exercise here looking at a hypothesis test on a mean. This time we're going to look at a two-tailed test uh, using the t-distribution. So we're estimating that sample standard deviation again. Uh, so let's get into it. Here uh, it's common among some universities to target a specific average grade in a certain course. At the end of each semester, instructors faced with the constraint are required to determine whether their class average is statistically different from the targeted average. If they are above or below, then some adjustment has to be made. Let's assume in a particular course, instructors are expected to have an average of 70%. This semester we had an average of 66% with 53 students and a sample standard deviation of 13 percentage points. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and set this up. So formulate our test, HO, HA, so here we're testing a population mean, and I want that mean to be 70, and I'm testing to see if it is different from 70. I'm actually going to put this in a decimal, because I like working with decimals better than percentages, less room for error, uh, as far as I'm concerned. You can do it either way you like, but uh, I like decimals better. So, uh, we have a level of significance is given to us 0.05. Our sample mean is 66% and the standard deviation is 13. So let's, uh, oh, did I justify this? If our evidence supports the null hypotheses, then I am unable to say that this class average is different from a 70% uh, population average. If I reject the null hypotheses, if the evidence supports the alternative, then uh, I'll have to make some adjustments to, to the grades because we're not achieving our goal of a 70% average. Now let's get into the test. So here are the next step, calculate your test statistic. X bar minus mu over S root N. So our sample mean was 0.66. Our hypothesized value is 70 divided by standard deviation over sample size. Where is my sample size? There's 53 students. And here we go. 0.66 minus 0.7 divided by 0.13 over root 53 equals negative 224 negative 224. Okay, so there's my test statistic. Let's um, do a p-value, do both the p-value approach and the critical value approach for this one. So this is, don't forget, this is a two-tailed test, so we have to make an adjustment to our probability that we're going to get here for the, uh, to obtain the p-value. So we'll go to our z-tables. I have uh, 53 observations, degrees of freedom then, 53 minus 1 is 52. I suspect we're going to have to round it a little bit there anyways. So, what do we have? 50, what's the closest we have here? It's probably we'll go to 50 degrees of freedom. So 50 degrees of freedom is our closest. So all I need is this row of information here and these probabilities here. We ignore everything else. Now I want to look for my test statistic, which was, where are we here? Negative 2.24. So negative two, well, we only have positive numbers. We have to make an adjustment here. This is only giving us positive values. Thankfully, this distribution is perfectly symmetric. So if my T statistic was negative 2.24, well, I'm going to look at positive 2.24. That will give us that area in the upper tail. But then this is, of course, a two-tail test. So then we will be multiplying that area by 2. So coming back down, 2.24 is in between these two values here. So my probability of interest is between 0.01 and 0 0.02, but because this is a two-tailed test, I need to double those. So my p-value is going to be something less than 0 0.04, something greater than 0 0.02. So it's this value times 2, this value 
times 2. So let's go back to our problem. My p-value for this test is less than 0 0.04, greater than 0 0.02. Alpha here was 0 0.05. So I can look at my results on my p-value, and if it's less than 0 0.04, then I know it's less than 0.05, so we can comfortably reject. In other words, this is uh, statistically different from a mean of 70, uh, so you're not achieving your target, your target average of 70%, uh, so you have to take some corrective action here to, uh, to boost up your, excuse me, boost up your grades a little bit because you're not on target. Okay, now, We've got everything for B. We've discussed our results. Uh, we're going to produce a confidence interval here that's consistent with this. Now, for that, I'm going to need a critical value anyways. Remember, the formula for a confidence interval is that point estimate, plus or minus. Here, that critical value is from the t-distribution uh, times that standard error. You see, it's very similar to the formula uh, that we used for a uh, confidence interval where we knew sigma, where we were using the z-distribution, the only thing that's different still is that we're using the t-distribution here. So let's go to the, go to our table and uh, find that critical value. So it's corresponding with alpha is 0 0.05. So here's 0 0.05. Notice these critical values are a lot easier to get on the t-tables than on the z-tables because we don't have to scan through a whole page of probabilities. We can just look at that one row. And that comes down here to our relevant degrees of freedom. And that critical value... Oh! I made a mistake. The same mistake that students make very often. This is alpha divided by 2. So it's not 0.5, it's 0 0.025. So here's that critical value, 2.009. Remember, if alpha is 0 0.05, and then the critical value is 0 0.05 divided by, oops, divided by 2. So this is that t for 0 0.025 from a distribution with 50 degrees of freedom. So 2.009. So if I come back here, we can also compare that against our test statistic there and get the same result, but let's let's skip over that for now. Let's plug in our values and obtain our, our confidence interval limits. So this is going to be 0 0.66 plus or minus 2.009. Oh, I'm running off of my screen. Shoot, let's come up here. Uh, 0 0.66 plus or minus 2.009 times our standard error, 0 0.13 over the square root of 53. I'll calculate just this margin of error here first. I like to do things in steps. Sometimes it's easier to avoid mistakes. So 2.009 times 0 0.13 divided by root 53. So that's going to be a margin of error equal to just 0 0.03. Let's round that to 3.6. So this is 0 0.036. So now our limits. Where's my calculator? So 0 0.66, that point estimate, plus our margin of error, 0 0.036. So 0 0.696. And our lower limit is our point estimate minus 0 0.036, 0 0.624. And that point estimate is in the middle. And this was all done at the 1 minus alpha, or 95% level of confidence. So this is a 95% confidence interval for the unknown population mean. Now, well, this means, how is this consistent with our test? Well, if I'm 95% confident that the true population mean uh, is between 62.4% and 69.6%, well, then I am 95% confident that it's not 70, because 70 does not exist in that interval. It's close, but it's out here. 
so it's consistent and 95% confident that the true mean is between 62.4% and 69.6%. Therefore, I am 95% confident that it is not 70 because 70, although it's close, it is outside of that interval. So there we go, we're all done. Uh, hopefully that all makes some sense. Um, if not, well, we've got more videos to watch. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.